G'day, I'm Roland Hearn and I would like to invite you to come on a road trip with me. Just before Christmas I was on holidays and I set out on this road trip. Before I left I made a video predicting uh, what the uh, trip would be like and then I recorded the trip and spoke to the camera um, on that trip just explaining primarily about the car and about the travel. Um, so I uh, I um, got back home and the and the intro video that I recorded didn't work out um, well at all. So here it is a couple of months later and I'm editing the video together and I need to do a new intro. So in that video I made a few predictions about what would happen on the trip. There's no point in me doing that, but I would like to explain as I did in that intro why I'm doing the trip. See every year I take um, holidays around Christmas time and one of the things that I love to do is is travel and I travel for work but uh, but um, I I never get to see things when I'm doing that I'm just in and out of places but uh, my ideal uh, holiday is to travel and see new places and, and do new things uh, my wife on the other hand hates the idea of travel. She loves to be able to spend a holiday at home. Well, home for me is where my office is and uh, I want to be able to get away. And so every year we have this uh, debate and I, and I end up uh, staying home because, because for me, what makes a holiday a holiday is the shared experience, not just doing it on my own. But when I'm at home, there's my home office and it never feels like I'm adequately um, relaxing. So I was thinking about that coming into these holidays and trying to, um, trying to work my way around it. And then I hit on this idea. Why don't I do a road trip and record it um, and that recording of it will be like the shared experience. And so if I'm going to do a road trip, I want to do something a little bit um, interesting, uh, a little bit exciting. And first of all, I thought, well, why don't I head to Western Queensland? I've never been to Western Queensland. And uh, that's such an amazing um, outback countryside, the channel country. Um, I thought maybe I could drive out there. Um, uh, stay a night or two and do a loop around and come back down um, from from the north to Brisbane. Then I then sanity um, reigned and I realised it's it's um, summer. Western Queensland is not the place to be um, in the middle of summer. And accommodation would would probably be um, less than uh, than perfect. And I and I enjoy getting a good night's sleep. So um, then I thought well. Now, here's the other thing that I love to do on holidays. Christmas time, summertime in Australia, it's, it's cricket season. I'm a big cricket fan. So one of the things I do do on holidays is watch the cricket match. But there's always interruptions and, and other things going on. So I don't always get the experience that I like. But why don't I go on a road trip, find a nice place to stay, and watch the cricket uninterrupted over a week. So to make that really exciting, I thought, how far could I go adequately in one day that didn't overwhelm me um, but also was was longer than what I would naturally do in a day. I ended up deciding on heading out to Bowen. I used my in North Queensland um, just south of Townsville north of Mackay. I decided that I would um, use my frequent flyer miles to get a nice um, motel uh, resort style um, accommodation on a, on a uh, beautiful bay um, and uh, and um, uh, that experience then um, turned out to the video, to be the video that you're about to watch. Because it's a road trip, I focus on things like uh, travel times and fuel economy and distance. There's a there's um, one kind of uh, exciting experience um, in the middle of it, um, and then there is. Um, uh, I do a lot of talking about the car that I'm dri driving, which is a Ford Puma. We had only just bought the few Ford Puma. Um, it's a it's it's a lovely car, and so um, I was really excited to take it on the on the long trip and to find out um, how it performed. But I talk about all of that um, in the video. So uh, the next time you see me, 
it'll be just after 1am in the morning I'll be sitting in my car it's the 15th of December 2021 and um, I, I start this process of heading out um, on the journey um, I hope you uh, enjoy the video I've put um, uh, um, Imperial measures up when I talk when I talk in metric. I know that uh, that it's potentially possible some of my American friends will watch this. That'll make it easy. Um, when I do fuel economy, I, I even throw in the old UK gallons as opposed to US gallons um, because um, there are um, older generation Australians and perhaps people in the UK uh, that the um, the miles per gallon won't relate if I just do it in in the US gallons. So. So I've, I've done all that. Some people like that kind of stuff. Road trip people like that kind of stuff. So uh, come along. Let's have a great trip. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. and um, I'm pretty excited about this trip. It's um, currently uh, 1.11 and it says it's 25 degrees outside. Um, I um, uh, um, have 1,128 kilometers to do today. My first stop is going to be uh, Bundaberg while well, I stop for breakfast. Now, a little bit about this car. We bought this car about three months ago. It was it was it's a 2020 build uh, uh, Ford Puma, and it now has 10,419.9 kilometres on the clock. I'm just going to reset now the uh, trip computer, and um, uh, we've loved it ever since we got it. Be we felt like we could um, afford to uh, to buy a car that would be the last car that we'll buy um, in our in our working lives and we did a little bit of research or I did a little bit of research um, and I kept on coming up again around across this Ford Puma I was wanting to try and do the best um, I could in this purchase to get a, an economical and um, an environmentally friendly car um, and so uh, this one kept on coming up and it, it, it had uh, a hybrid engine um, but I didn't realize I was looking at the UK version when we went to buy this we discovered that in Australia all they have is the uh, is the hydrodyne um, engine but it's a 1000 cc one liter three-cylinder engine car and it gets pretty good economy so I'm going to be really interested to see how that goes on this on this long journey um, anyway I'm going to head to the petrol station now and fill up um, and uh, and reset everything at that point and we'll see how we go all right well um, I'm pretty excited about this let's get going okay well not a lot of light here is there but I'm um, pulling into uh, the service station here in, in a little bit all right here we go But I use 98. Where, um, it does seem to get better fuel economy on 98 um, uh, than um, than regular. We we start out on just regular um, fuel and then um, move to 98. All right, here we go. Well, as you can see, dawn is beginning off there to the east it's uh, 420 I'm uh, coming up on um, three hours driving and I have done uh, 254 kilometers 
I'm between uh, Bundaberg and, uh, sorry, between Maribara and Childers and um, the traffic's beginning to um, develop um, in, uh, in the early hours of the morning. It's been a really good drive because uh, the, there's, the, tra the traffic's been virtually non-existent for uh, the, uh, the biggest part of it. One of the cool features that I really uh, love about this car is the number of automated things uh, that it has, which I guess is all new technology, but I've never had a car that has uh, these kinds of things before. Just coming up to a slowdown area here, it's 80 kilometers an hour. So I'll just back off the speed there to set on 80 kilometers. Um, but uh, I discovered this trip for the first time um, how effective uh, the um, automatic high beam is right now there's no traffic coming my way and uh, high beam is, is set but it will drop as soon as it's it detects a light coming in the distance or coming up behind um, red lights of a car or even if you go through a lighted area for an intersection or something on the highway uh, back to 100 k's now um, it will it'll dim the lights um, which is uh, which is a really cool cool feature um, after I've been driving for a while here comes a here comes a truck in the other direction um, head, uh, lights are dipped um, and you'll see how far away those lights dip because there the truck goes um, now um, what when I have been driving for a while I do tend to forget to um, dip the lights and so uh, so that's been one of the cool features that um, I've really I, I've known it had it but I've only seen it work um, as effectively as, as it is um, on this trip because of the, the distance I'm driving at night time anyway the, the glowing door um, light there is appearing I'm, I'm looking forward to not being dry not driving at night anymore um, still the biggest chunk of the trip is ahead of me um, I'm probably going to stop in about well, half an hour or so to get a cup of coffee um, and uh, just top up the fuel. I want to be able to drive from here up to Mackay. I'm going to have breakfast at, at the Rockhampton, but I'd like to fill up in Mackay. That'll get us up to Bowen easily enough. So anyway, I'll top up and I'll get some, um, I'll get some coffee um, as well. So we're doing well so far. And of course, this is this is easy driving to this point. Uh, the biggest part of the trip is ahead, but I am doing well. Um, I thought I'd be more fatigued being um, waking up um, as early as I did. I didn't get as much sleep last night as I'd hoped. I went to bed relatively early, but because I was aware of going doing a big trip today, kept on waking up. So, um, uh, well, actually, not kept waking up. I didn't get to sleep till it was up nearly uh, half past ten. And I got up at uh, half past 12, so I uh, think I got about two hours sleep. But the good news is I'm doing well. Just coming into the town of Apple Tree, um, and it's now 4.33. From memory, there's a roadhouse just down the bottom here. Um, so In 500 metres, keep right to stay on Bruce Highway A1. So before I get there, I think the... Uh, the roadhouse is on the right here. Yeah, here it is here. So I'm just going to stop here, uh, fuel up, and um, get some coffee, hopefully. So I've just stopped here at Apple Tree Creek for a few minutes. It's 4.44. I'm trying to um, get uh, some podcasts to listen to, but let me just, uh, um, I have done seven, uh, sorry, 271 kilometers, 271.4 kilometers since I left home. Um, and I uh, used 14.58 um, liters of fuel. It's saying, I've got a bit of coffee on that receipt too. Um, it is saying that I'm averaging 5.3 litres per 100 kilometres. So lots of 
lots of roadworks today on this trip um, and uh, it is getting a little frustrating that so much of it I've spent like now 60 kilometers an hour but that's just part of the driving and this is actually a very beautiful um, area isn't it so um, uh, it's now um, 5.43 a.m. I've been driving for um, four hours, four a bit hours. Um, and uh, have covered since the beginning uh, some 353 kilometers. Currently the um, fuel economy since I last filled up is uh, 5.4 litres per, per 100 kilometres. One of the things that, uh, another one of the things that I really uh, love about this car is the um, seating position in space. Let me just get this camera around. Well, let's see, 6.30. So about five hours on the road now. A total uh, travel distance. 421 kilometers. So uh, when we started at 1180, that means I've got uh, what 660 to go. Um, uh, so fair, fair bit to still go. No, I, I guess I'm about a third of the way that would make it. Uh, starting to feel like the decision to uh, do six hours for, as, uh, first up to get to uh, Rockhampton. Um, may have been um, a little bit optimistic and uh, I'm thinking that um, I may end up st uh, stopping um, on the on the road um, near Gladstone um, and uh, which is, I think it's it's about 45 minutes 50 minutes closer to the south of of, um, of Rockhampton and that will give us about an hour's uh, sorry um, about a four hour run from there up to Mackay, which is where I'll have uh, have lunch. So things are going well. I, I definitely am starting to um, to feel uh, the um, uh, the impact of uh, very little, little sleep last night. Um, from in terms of my body, um, not feeling any um, any soreness or aches, and which is um, I quite often get pains in my in my feet so uh, and ankles when I'm driving um, at this age I didn't used to uh, but nothing like that so um, anyway as I, was, as I was saying before um, the uh, the thing that really impresses me about this car is um, the the headroom look um, I don't know if you can it's fairly good but not but it's not unusual for a person to have you know about that much space um, between the head but it's uh, it's a full it's a full um, like this um, headspace so I'm coming into Miriam Vale now which is um, which is uh, nice it's along the way uh, this first part of the trip up until up until Gladstone is a fairly well the sun's get um, the sun's moved around behind us um, fairly uh, um, no um trek for us um, uh, we've done a lot of driving in this on this part of the coast once we get past Gladstone I have done very little driving maybe once or twice between Gladstone and um, I'm trying to get that Sun uh, away so we're heading northwest at the moment we'll turn the corner here and, and it'll move around to the west um, and then it's moves to the back window um, after we get past the Gladstone turnoff, uh, that stretch between Gladstone, well, from Gladstone on, is um, is road that I've only ever been on uh, once, twice, well, well so at least twice, um, but uh, but not much more than that. So looking forward to that. This is this is fairly well known territory for for me, um, but uh, but looking forward to getting the new part. So I'm guessing it's a, that's about probably oh half an hour um, till I stop um, for breakfast. So uh, so that'll be that'll be good. I'll do some more um, recording at that point. All right. Well, um, 
I'm just about to start a Zoom call, which means my uh, my phone on the f um, which my phone camera is not available. So I've just stopped here at Calliope so um, I could get some breakfast because I wanted to get the breakfast out of the way before I start this Zoom call. So. Um, here, so Calliope is uh, up to turn off to Gladstone. So the um, next major town after this is is Rockhampton. But my next stop, all things being equal, uh, will actually be will be Mackay. So everything's going well. It was good to have a, a, a 15 minute stop um, uh, just to stretch my legs. Um, but no, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling very positive. All right, well, I'm back on the road, and next stop, Mackay. All right, well, I am in Rockhampton, um, and I have um, uh, just finished my Zoom call, um, so I didn't get to fit video any of that trip between Gladstone and um, and Rocky, but it was uh, it, it really was beautiful. It's it's cattle country. Um, Rockhampton's a major cattle. Um, distribution point um, and has been for many many years um, and the countryside was just gorgeous um, but here I am in Rocky I'll pass through Rocky in a few minutes and and we'll be headed to uh, headed to Mackay and it's saying it's three hours and 42 minutes to Mackay from here fuel economy still at aver averaging about five and a half uh, 5.4 it's just dropped down to um, and um, I have now done 595 kilometers since uh, leaving this morning so doing quite well and um, and uh, very much enjoying it um, this is quite a beautiful city I'm not gonna uh, move the camera around while in the city obviously um, but it's been a long long time since I was in Rocky Let's see, the last time I was in Rockhampton would have been in the late 80s. Um, and uh, so, so here we are, it's very, very beautiful. All right, well, um, I'll chat again soon. Hopefully, um, or perhaps I'll be able to uh, pull up some uh, driving between here and Mackay. Um, we're getting, we are now, so, so yeah, that's a fact I, wanna, I wanted to point out. Rockhampton is actually right on the Tropic of Capricorn. This is the Tropic of Capricorn, and so once I move north of of uh, Rockhampton, I'm actually in the tropics. Up until this point, we've been in the subtropics. Now, uh, once I leave Rockhampton, we'll be in the tropics. So, kind of a a monumental piece of the journey. Well, here we go. We've got to overtake these trucks here in a moment. That was a good parking and passing space just there, but um, uh, I wasn't close enough to take advantage of it. So um, we'll just we'll have to keep our eye for the next one. There will be an overtaking lane at some point, I'm sure, but uh, let's, I haven't seen a sign to say how far away that is. So what I'm going to do is going to put the uh, little Puma into sport mode and um, get ready to take advantage of an opportunity up here comes some road work so that's going to delay things everything every a little bit oh, this is rough service it doesn't it doesn't it just doesn't say road works okay all right well it looks like there could be some space no 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 not there my cue that i'm watching for is whether or not this uh no he won't because this not oh, maybe maybe well hang on here we go Gotta get there first. And that was a little uh I'm not sure why he flashed his lights was well and truly in before he came along. Alright, here comes another opportunity here. Just a minute. Is that We got to 145 k's, and I mean that was just in the part lane. 
the uh, time to pass the um, that truck, so there wasn't any uh, long um, engaged effort to speed. That was just passing that truck, 146 k's. That's a three-cylinder um, turbocharged 1,000 cc motor, smaller than my motorbike. Very, very impressive. All right, well, let's see. Um, have passed the eight hour mark since I left home, um, which theoretically means it's uh, four and a bit hours. Well, of course, I have stopped a few times, so four and, and some hours to go. But that would put me two thirds of the way. And, um, and uh, not not doing too bad at all. Again, I reflect, I am uh, tired as a result of the um, not getting any sleep last night, but not fatigued from driving. Um, no, it's, uh, it's, um, it's really good, this car, really good. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that um, definitely, definitely um, saves energy is the, um, is the um, active cruise control that uh, keeps your space spaced out from the from the car in front of you, um, and as the, if that car decelerates, it will it will decelerate accordingly, um, and so you you are not you know, your your in your um, instincts are not as heavily engaged all the time, um, and, and not as in normal driving, and that does help. But of course, the other thing is. The, uh, the line tracking um, I can um, I'm going around this uh, this corner here um, and I'm not even holding the steering wheel and it's just tracking it um, perfectly now you can't drive with your hands off the steering wheel um, but uh, but certainly um, one of the things that on a long trip that always makes you nervous is if you have to reach for something um, and you know a good driver, a good conscientious driver probably wouldn't reach for it, but but I'm the kind of person that will, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get that. Well, um, uh, here we go, overtaking lane, so that's, that's going to be very helpful. Um, in this Puma, I'm very aware that in that brief second that my attention is off the road, um, the car is actually still engaged in the process and that's a real relief. Now some might say that there's a downside to that because it means you're less engaged. I'm not finding that at all true. Um, I am finding myself actively involved in driving, enjoying the driving, just not stressed, not stressed out. Not that, not that um, I'm stressed when I'm driving, but there is a level of relaxation in this process that, um, that um, minimizes the, uh, the impact of a, of a long journey. It's very hard to describe because a person might be given to say, well, you're not paying attention. I am paying attention. I'm very aware that I'm aware of everything that's going on on the road. Um, I just feel um, fresher than what I would have felt uh, under normal circumstances having driven for um, eight, and a, eight and a half hours. Um, be that as it may. I'm not sure uh, where to go with that, but uh, but it's definitely it's definitely a real thing. Wow, uh, this car just went close to saving my life. Um, I'm not sure what would have happened had I not been in this car. Uh, I'm currently driving in a a 110 kilometer hour zone. And I came up behind two cars that were traveling about just under 100 kilometers an hour. And the car automatically slows. I didn't realize how slow they were going the car, but the car automatically slows, it's, it's no problem. And so I was in a non-passing area and it looked like I was gonna be stuck behind them for, for quite a while. And I reached down to get uh, a, a lolly one of these. I'm just going to slow down here. There's a roadworks ahead. And um, and in the second that 
that I looked down, one of those cars slammed on their brakes. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and um, I'm not sure, maybe they got a flat tire or something, I don't know, but they slammed on their brakes and pulled off the road very quickly. I didn't, I didn't, um, I wasn't, what, I wasn't looking. And the car slammed on its brakes and pulled up, um, big red flashing sign across the dash, eminent impact. When I looked up, wondering why the car was stopping, I was, I was centimeters away from the car in front of me. So, the split second that I looked down and up again, um, that all happened. If I if I had a if it had been if I had not been driving this car, I would have looked up and 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 I wouldn't have been braking at all. I'm pretty sure I would have ran straight into the back of them. So, um, and I haven't had that kind of a situation in a long time. Um, so, wow, um, eating lollies while I drive is a pretty standard practice. So. I, mean, I can't I can hardly believe that uh, that it was that I mean obviously the person hit their brakes the exact second that I looked down um, and, um, and there you go well that's how that's how it can happen good lollies by the way okay so I have uh, I've run that um, accident or near accident through my head a few times and I think I uh, in the haste to get it down on video I, I think I did misremember um, things the car it slammed on its brakes very hard and the, and the, uh, the thing flashed up on the front imminent accident um, but the car has a uh, an, auto, an automatic predetermined um, uh, stopping buffer uh, from traffic in front of it. It won't go past um, that buffer. Um, so it stopped hard as if a, a human person might stop hard and end up a lot closer to the car. It stopped hard at keeping that gap to the car in front of it. And I know that that was the case because um, what I started reflecting about it was how I pulled out of that. And so I had time to uh, to look up, assess the situation, put my own foot on the brake, um, put the indicator on to go around, recognize the car immediately in front of me uh, had had braked um, to the point where they weren't. The car, the two cars in front slammed on its brakes. The car behind was obviously, or seemingly traveling with that car. So it braked. Um, in reaction to the car, but then it put its indicator on to pull over in front of the of the car of the first car, and um, and that was uh, and I had time then to pull out and pass um, both of them um, with a, with a good sizable distance. So as I reflected on those things in my mind, I realised I did not pull up um, in the distance that immediately I thought I had um, probably had I been uh, not the car hadn't been braking, I would have seen it in time and, and perhaps even stopped um, adequately. Um, it was because it won't allow the car to go within a certain um, distance of the car in front. That was what uh, that was what um, caused it to brake so so hard. Um, so even so, um, that is that's tremendous. I'm so glad about that. I'm so glad that that happened. Um, it shows you how um, how um, attentive the car is to the surroundings. Uh, because had I been looking down for any longer, um, I, I, it would have been an accident. I have no doubt about that. So, um, wow, uh, um, I feel I feel delighted in again this car's capacity uh, to save lives. I'm very very impressed with this car. This car just glides um, along, along the road. I guess there's a bit of road noise, um, um, but it's, it's certainly not invasive. 
it's probably more on the camera than, than what I'm feeling. I guess you, you tune things out. And now that I'm standing and listening to it, I can, I can hear a bit of raised noise. But it's not bothering me. Um, and um, uh, um, the, I'm now, what, uh, it's 10 to 11. Um, and so that makes it uh, uh, nine, um, nine and a half hours I've been driving. Uh, and I have uh, probably another um, three hours to go, nine and a half, yeah, that'd be right, three and a half, uh, three and a half, four hours to go. Doing great, yeah. So, uh, so um, yeah, really, really loving the Puma. It's doing a great job. I would, I would highly recommend it as a vehicle to, to, to anybody. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, cost of fuel for the trip is when it's done. Given that I'm, buy, I'm paying, I'm buying 98 octane level fuel, and at the moment, I think last stop I got it at a dollar, um, a dollar seventy six a litre. Maybe it's dollar. Oh, I'll check it again before I'm finished. I'll put it up there um, at that point. Uh, so it's not, it's not cheap fuel, um, but uh, this is, it's doing really well. Um, yeah, 5.5 litres per 100 kilometres still sitting, sitting right at that. I got 304 k's left on this tank full, um, and I have done um, 470 k's since the beginning. So that gives me that that range of that tank to be 770 kilometres. That's, that's that's pretty good for a, for a little tiny car. Anyway, we keep heading on. All right, well, it's one and a half kilometres to go to um, where I'm having lunch, um, and which is just a BP roadhouse. Um, but uh, it's now 12.30, um, so I've been on the road now for 11 hours. Is that right? 12.30, one, one, yeah, 11 hours. Um, and I'll probably just, uh, I'll probably just stay, um, 15 minutes or so here to get, to get... In 600 metres at the roundabout, take the third exit. I'll get fueled up here, and just grab a quick bite and get back on the road again. Um, I think I'm just a couple of hundred kilometres from, from, um, from the resort. So it's, um, it says I've travelled 920 kilometres so far. And um, I've also done 641 kilometres since I filled up this morning. This has been by far the longest section. I, I haven't stopped at all in this section. Uh, well, sorry, I did since I filled up. I stopped and and, um, and had breakfast at um, at Calliope there. Um, but uh, uh, that's so yes, I have had one stop in that 600 kilometre section. Um, but I'm just uh, just going to go in here. This BP. Roadhouse. Exit the roundabout, then your destination will be on the left. And um, fill up. I'll record the actual kilometre. So your destination is on the left. And I hope they have um, super here. Uh, 98. Let's see. And I want to hope it's not too expensive being far north. Um, I'll try and let it. Yep, that's it. Down there on the front window. All right. Well, there we are. So it's at twelve thirty-five, and I've done six hundred forty-one point seven kilometres since I filled up this morning at Apple Tree. All right. Here I go. So I'm just going to um, move the car, and um, and then I'm just going to go. Okay. Uh, but it was uh, 37 litres, 37 litres, 11341.1 k's um, and um, 641.7 kilometres since the last stop uh, and 37 litres to go 641 kilometres so um, I'll um, I have to work out what miles per gallon that was and I'll stick it on the on the, the screen all right well that's it so 
had uh, had a hamburger at the um, at the uh, service station. Um, not a great hamburger. Um, and uh, we're back on the road again. It says it's going two hours thirteen minutes from here. One hundred and seventy nine kilometres. ETA is three twenty. That will, I guess, be almost exactly fourteen hours of uh, travelling time. So um, originally, I think. Um, it said it would be 12 and a half hours traveling time of course multiple stops and it always uh, it always takes longer to um, lo uh, stops always take you longer than what you um, anticipate um, so uh, so anyway here we go we're just coming into uh, Proserpine and there's been lots of these uh, sugarcane um, fields and mountains in the distance and uh, it just looks very very northern Queenslandish all the way um, all the way uh, up since um, before Mackay I've been passing through areas that are very much uh, like this I'm not sure that I've got a lot of of uh, imagery of that um, but I uh, just thought uh, coming into Proserpine here um, I would film a little bit. I've always, I've been trying to save the battery, make sure I don't run out of the battery uh, on the camera. I don't know how much I've got left on it, but um, uh, I'm now only one hour away, 72 kilometres, um, and uh, I just thought uh, I could probably, uh, um, I'm probably pretty close to getting to being able to make it, so uh, we, we shall see. In 400 but, metres, keep right to continue on Blair Street, Bruce Highway. There we are, we're now in Proserpine, and, um, and we have 100, uh, sorry, 72 kilometers to go, one hour and one minute, uh, the GPS says. Keep and, right to continue on Blair Street. And I've done 128 kilometers since filling up at Mackay, um, and a total Continue so on A1 far. for 64 kilometers. Um, total so far, hang on, 1,049 kilometres, so uh, there we go. Alright, well I have um, made it to Bowen. Um, I am uh, four minutes, three kilometres from, uh, from the resort, and um, it's 3.38. Take the next right onto Horseshoe Bay Road. Horseshoe Bay Road, sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? Or Shoe Bay Road. Um, yeah, so it's 338 total. Continue on Horseshoe Bay Road for one kilometer. So my uh, my total kilometers driven to this point is let's see 1118.2. I don't actually remember when I started out this morning what it what exactly it was. I think um, I think I've done a little bit more than I, I needed to because of um, driven into places but um, this is it very very good 339 so 130 339 that's uh, to four, just a little over 14 hours um, yeah good drive good drive the last um, hour and a half was really taxing because um, in 400 was, meters at the roundabout take the second exit onto Rose Bay Road because it was really very, um, uh, uh, lots and lots of roadworks, lots and lots of roadworks, and um, and uh, they were all sighted with um, with uh, traffic light um, uh, control. So so large trap uh, roadworks where you would line up in a, in a long line at a red light for five ten minutes at a time. And um, and that was kind of exhausting, but the good news is when I got here, I've discovered that the um, Woolies is only five minutes down the road. I mean, I stopped actually before uh, coming into here. Um, it just got a couple of things that I needed quickly, um, but it's on the road in. It's five minutes away. It's it's uh, almost walking distance. Um, well, any any distance is walking distance if you got long enough, they say. But um, uh, nevertheless. Uh, it's not that far, three kilometres maybe I think it was. Uh, so I'm just uh, I'm just trying to 
give you the perspective of the of the um, of the drive in. So I might just turn this around. And Eight hundred meters, two two minutes. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Oh my goodness! Look at that. That is the Coral Sea, Pacific Ocean. I kind of feel inspired to do this kind of trip. In three hundred meters, point. your destination will be on the right. Destinations on the right, the uh, oceans on the right, so that's all boating well, isn't it? Oh, that's it there. Okay, so where is the? Where is the that's that's the resort there. Yeah. Last evening here, and um, I haven't taken the footage of low tide. It really is incredible. To the water here. Just, just amazing. The kids playing in the front there. So very, very peaceful. Really, really enjoyed this opportunity to be away this weekend.